Okay, I've just come back from a fishing trip and I thought I'd quickly take you through my uh, kayak. This is a uh, primal kayak from BCF, Boating Camp Fishing. Uh, it's about 3.1 meters, so about 10 foot long. A lot of modifications to the kayak, so let's go through it. Uh, first up at the front here, a paddle keeper. I uh, just put this modification on yesterday, so easy enough just to slide the paddle under and it'll keep it nice and secure. Also a modification I made this week was LED rain lights, fore and aft, and they're just off a switch here. And they came in real handy this morning, I was out pre-dawn. Lights are working well. Well, and that's first light, I'd better get to the fishing spot. Okay, let's move this paddle out of the way. In the front, a bunch of electronics. This is a PWM for motor control. Uh, 10 gauge wire going right to the back to the motor. Coming out of the battery here into the side and I've remoted the potentiometer there and the um, forward and reverse switch into this, it's actually a nine pin wire, I think, or eight pin, and I'm using seven. Uh, two batteries. This one is used just for the fish finder. I use XT60 connectors. This is a Turnergy 5000 milliamp hour battery with an inline fuse. That's just used for the fish finder to keep everything separate and make sure there's no interference from the main battery in the motor. The other battery is a handmade 50 amp hour lithium ion battery made with NCR 18650B Panasonic batteries. Uh, they're about 3400 milliamp hours each. They're in a 4P, sorry, 4S, 4 series, 15P configuration. So 15 batteries in each parallel group in series four times. So that gives me up around 50 amp hours. I was on this battery today. I'm not sure how many volts left, but you know, I was probably on there for a couple of hours, never at full throttle. And I bet you when I get home, I'm still at at least 50%. I'll do that up in a minute. Okay, run some deck padding. Just some, I think it's three to, maybe three or four mil foam from the hardware store. There's my fish finder, hook five reveal. Um, rail blazer mount with an extension there so I can take it from the rail blazer mount at the front. Comes up between my legs into easy reach. Running rail blazer. Rod holders on both sides. Uh, normally run with three rods. Okay, I've put a perforated deck matting underneath here because I was running out, I think, and uh, try and deaden the sound from the tackle boxes underneath. I run two tackle boxes. Oh, there's a sponge to sponge me out if I'm getting uh, getting swamped. Carry one for plastics and one for jigs and leader. Only fish Z Man plastics. And sometimes on my bait cast, I'll be running some hard bodies. So. I do run occasionally gulp, but I run that in plastic bags out of the crate because it leaks and is smelly and they don't like uh, mixing the Z-Man with anything else because they'll all melt. This one is a crank of crab. I caught a small pinky snapper on that this morning. Atomic hard body, didn't catch anything on that today. And a bunch of different uh, Z-Man, oh sorry, uh, TT uh, tournament jig heads. Here's a control for the motor. Promoted through an 8-pin uh, plug and socket. The socket's permanently in the side of the kayak there. It's got a cover for when I unplug it. This uh, controller has a potentiometer and the forward and reverse switch. And you know, forward, reverse, off and on. I can show you that working. Yeah, there it is, working a little bit. There's, the motor is a water snake, 24 pound thrust motor and that'll get me uh, easily at a comfortable 
sort of two, two and a half kilometres, like 25%, up to about 3.8 at 100%, but I hardly ever run at 100%. This is a Railblazer cleat. I use that for the anchor trolley. Homemade rod holder uh, set up for a bait caster. I use that for trolling. Um, my cooler sitting in a well there. Uh, I normally carry drinks and ice in there at the moment. It's got some fish fillets from today's catch. A silicon net in the other flush mount rod holder. Okay, on the crate. Um, what about in here? I've got a uh, waterproof bag with keys and wallet and things like that. The uh, measuring rule with uh, legal limits in New South Wales. Uh, some burley that I use in my homemade burley bomb. There's my uh, gold plastics, uh, another bunch of Z-Man plastics, so all the spares. And this, this is a homemade kill bag out of a windscreen, uh, car windscreen uh, shield, so it's insulated. Uh, so it's a windscreen shield cut in half, duct taped, to, duct taped together. And I need, uh, I found I needed something like that when I was out here a couple of weeks ago and hooked onto a nice big 77 centimeter, so two and a half foot long Jewfish. And I had to store it under the seat all the way home. So I need to kill bag for something that can't fit in the cooler. On the front of the crate, I have a holster for pliers, I have a filleting knife that I also use as a kill spike and my lip grips on the other side, and I'll show you those in a minute. Here's the homemade bait bomb, made out of PVC pipe. The top comes off, on it is a float, a bit of paracord, and a carabiner. And I can put that on the anchor trolley or any other point on the kayak. Now, a lot of people are running this style of uh, keeper for your anchor rope. So, clothesline, replace the plastic cord in there with the power cord about 45 feet I think 15 meters and this is a Cooper anchor it's a really lightweight anchor compared to those other four pronged steel ones uh, always lays down flat because of weight in the, in the point I run a cable tie there that's sacrificial so in the case that uh, it does get stuck you can give it a good really good yank break that cable tie and it'll pull up by the nose I have had to do that once before the sea tug uh, wheels there for getting it uh, in and out of the water. And this one, let's see, running uh, bait tackle and terminal tackle in there and squid jigs. I never use any of the terminal tackle. I'm always running uh, soft plastics or some hard bodies. A cheap rod holder on the back. Uh, now this is my favourite spin rod, it's a Revo X uh, from Abu Garcia, uh, medium fast action I think, uh, always run soft plastics on this one, uh, running about a six pound braid with about a six or eight pound leader. A Daiwa bait caster, medium rod, I don't like it to be honest, it's too heavy, um, I have to really throw heavy, heavy, uh, heavy hard bodies or heavy plastics, heavy jigs on it just to get it uh, working well. So I should have listened to a mate of mine who told me not to buy a bait caster. And this is a $20 cheapy uh, that I'm using for trolley at the mo trolling at the moment. Uh, running a um, high quality plastic on there. That one really swims quite aggressively. And that's what brought me in the uh, Jewfish a couple of weeks back. Uh, it's a two and a half foot Jewfish. Okay, let's keep going. We've got a power for the motor into a water snake socket, uh, two prong power socket. So taking the head off the motor. So now I'm only using the power and everything else is controlled by the PWM. Using the rudder control that normally comes with this kayak to carabiners and these on, uh, so these are stainless steel, three on six stainless steel turnbuckles used for straining wire on um, on things like uh, um, oh, staircases and you'll have seen them on uh, guardrails around people's houses. This is a rack mount 
a seat clamp from a bike and they happen to take a five mil uh, metric uh, bolt as well so that works really well um, i've taken away the normal uh, height adjuster on the water snake and put on a hose clamp and this is something uh, axman on youtube uses so uh, a lift mechanism going into a harken pulley mounted onto the side uh, through a small pulley and then up into there and so I can use what is normally the rudder raising and lowering mechanism through this mechanism instead and what will happen is it's stuck at the moment underneath the sea tug but I can just give that pull from the cockpit and that'll raise up on the side here just running a bait bucket and I carried tin fish food in there uh, tin cat food sorry I used one today in the burly bomb this is my lip grips holster made out of PVC pipe squashed in three different areas so one to match the top of the lip grips thin down the bottom to match the actual um, grippers themselves and medium in the middle with a bit of foam in there just to stop any rattling and that works really well I've actually put in a um, another hatch in the back, a nine inch hatch, I think it is, uh, or it might even be a 10 inch hatch. Uh, the reason I've done that is uh, so I could do the wiring, but also, uh, let me just dump this water out. Uh, also in there, I'm carrying spares, like a spare um, propeller for the motor, uh, spare pins and things like that. So I don't need to get to those except in an emergency, almost need to them today. Barracuda has always been my tag name, so I'd like add that on the side of the boat. In here, I just run a multitude of things food, uh, LED headlamp because I'm going out pre dawn, sunscreen, charts, you know, bait scissors, a bit of food, a bit of paracord if I need to tie up the, uh, tie up the boat at all. So that's the boat, and I hope you liked it and look forward to sharing some other modifications in the future.